And what about short answers? Let's look at that. When you were actually doing those over time, what did you learn to cut out or add? What did you learn about how to structure responses for different marks? Were you always going over the lines on the exam paper or you found that actually you were able to compress your answer to within the allocated space? Talk us through some specific structural elements of your responses and if you can, just use a couple of examples of different types of mark or differently marked questions. Yeah, definitely. I, that's probably the, one of the hardest things I struggled with throughout PDHPE was differentiating between a three marker and a five marker. And it's, well, what am I not including a three marker that needs to be in a five marker? And what yeah. if I take this out of a five marker for a three marker, am I going to lose marks? So I guess one big thing was that is just practice, hand them in. Your teacher will be like, no, you need more examples for this. And you're like, what? It's only like four lines for a three marker. And you've written the whole page. Um, but that's by the by. I think um, with three marker, five markers and eight markers, it kind of depends on the syllabus dot point to begin with, but definitely with eight markers, it's everything. Eight to 12 markers is just everything you can think about. All the examples include as many examples as you can. Were you going over, often going over into new new lines? Like, and if so, how many? Like, give people an idea of what you actually did. Yeah, so I would, the way I structured my exams was a little bit weird to compare to other people, but I would go backwards. So I would start with everything that's worth the most. So the 12 markers, the eight markers, and then move back up from the five to the threes. Um, so what that helped me with is obviously a 12th marker is going to be quite a few pages. It's not going to be a few paragraphs. Um, so 12 markers, I probably wrote between two to three pages on. Um, yep. And then an eight marker would probably be one to two. And within that, you have your paragraphs depending on the syllabus, syllabus again. And you kind of want to include two to three examples per paragraph. You just want to be like this, if, you can see this in this example and this sporting and this event and if you do this and this and this um, and that just really helps the markers be like oh they know what they're doing they know what they're talking about they know exactly what's going on um, in terms of three markers they're the ones I struggle with the most especially four markers there's sometimes weird four markers that like what is this doing in here I have no idea how much we need to write on this um, but with those kind of lesser um, mark questions the most important thing is just to define the point they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, give a little bit of a deeper description about what's like, why is it important for sport mm -hmm. or why is it important for rehabilitation or something? Yep. And then give an example and that's it. So three, so three mark, you would say a definition, elaborate on its significance and one example you found that was what you were able to do and still achieve three out of three? Yeah, most and of the time. Sometimes you would need to include maybe two examples. Um, okay. But most of the time, it's just one mark definition, one mark elaborate, one mark example, next. Great. And, and a four marker, would you add a second example always? Or did you find it, w it was basically the same qualified by, you know, the nature of the question? Yeah. Um, four markers, I always struggle with. The less the questions, I just, less the mark questions, I just, I could not understand the structure of them. Um, but I think what helped me was just sticking to that define, elaborate example and then with the four markets, I'd be like, okay, maybe I, I'll elaborate a little bit more after that example and add another example. Okay. Um, and then five markers just keep going. <laughs> so maybe just like one more of those, those examples, one more explanation of the example. Yeah, I think that's probably an easy way to think about it. Um, I suppose it's not an exact science and I guess people are always looking for the formula. It's good to have guidelines though. And I, I think that, that structure, that framework you gave is really useful for students, you know, define, elaborate example, and then maybe an extra example explained for a four or five marker. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is just handing it into your teacher being like, is this enough? Do I have enough information? Do I have too much information? That was one thing I struggled with is for a three marker, I'd write a whole page. And it's like, well, this is worth three marks. You don't need to spend 20 minutes on a three marker, like cut it down. Um, so I think, yeah, just trying, handing it in and your teacher be like, you need another example here. Oh, this isn't really in depth enough. And like, okay, now I know how much I need to put in a three marker, how much is in a five marker yeah. in comparison. Yeah, great. And what about the eight marker? Can you give us an example of how many body paragraphs you'd have and how long an introduction and potentially conclusion would be? Um, so one eight marker that just rings, I think I just did it so many times, was I think it was about the rehabilitation of the hamstring and kind of the things um, that you need to do to kind of get the hamstring so you can go back into sport after you've torn the hamstring. And what would happen is you have obviously the paragraphs depending on the dot point and the dashes. Um, but the first paragraph, you just want to define what define what it is, define what a tear is, it's a soft tissue injury, define rehabilitation. 
and then talk about the ways um, that you can rehabilitate it. So talking about those specific dot points. So it's, I think, progressive mobilization, graduated exercise, um, cryotherapy and hydrotherapy, kind of, you don't, you can list those. You don't have to define those in the introduction. And then you have specific paragraphs and all of those different dashes. So it'd be, the first one would be progressive mobilization and you define what it is, you would then expand and how that actually helps you get back to sport, how that helps the hamstring to get you back to sport. You'd give an example, you'd be like, for example, if an AFL player who tore his hamstring during kicking a ball or running, sprinting to make a mark, mm. um, needs to get back to the game, progressive mobilization through stretching helps to lessen the scar tissue, for example. Um, and then you'd talk about it again. You say conditioning part of progressive mobilization helps with this blah, 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 example. And then the next mm. part, blah, blah. And that's the other thing with PDHP responses, the more specific you can be in your examples, the better. Mm. It can literally be the most random example. You can be like, if a cricketer who was bowling a ball with the spin technique ran too fast and rolled his ankle, like it doesn't have to be just mm. an athlete rolls his ankle during a game. If you can be more specific, the better. So random, oh. just make up a story in your head as you're writing them. <laughs>